episode of your favorite program, Omote. As you know, for those of you who are first time viewers, Omote is a Delta word for a young girl or a young married woman. And this is about celebrating our younger married women 35 years and above, discussing the issues, challenges they're faced with, and preferring solutions, which is actually the way forward. It's not a marriage a relationship show, although when you talk about married people, somehow, somehow, relationship has to creep in. But that's not the essence of the show. The essence of the show is to have young women who are there at that stage to find themselves, go for their purpose, follow their visions and dreams, and live life to the fullest. My name is Ogaga Otauti. You're welcome to the show. I'm not here alone. I have some amazing guests here with me. Two of them, actually. <laughs> Dr. Efio Udo, welcome to the show. He's a general practitioner and he'll be talking to us today. Thank you. And I have to my very far left, Mrs. Isioma Ogudenga. She's a social, <laughs> she's a social development expert and also a fertility advocate. Hmm. You don't want to miss this. I shouldn't tell you the topic. Let's go on a big break. We'll return. We'll get started. Stay with us. I'll be discussing a special topic, dealing with infertility issues. Yeah, you heard me right. It's one very special topic that young or married women have to talk about. Some of them may not want to say it out of fear, but you see, a young woman above 35, as she grows, as she gets older, she's like, oh, I'm not married yet. And then they get married, boom. When is the baby coming? You're waiting for one year, two years, three years, four years, well, I'm not in the right position to talk about it. I have people who have the right to talk about it. What does it, what, what, how can one deal with infertility issues as a, a young and married woman? Okay, thank you very much, Agaga. It's so great to be on the show thank today. Thank you for coming. Uh, yes, you talked about my story. Um, my story began a couple of years back when I got married. And um, as a young married, um, young lady, I did not think that uh, getting having children would be an issue. I was very certain that um, in a couple of months, <laughs> you know, like I would be pregnant. You know, and I was actually um, with my husband just planning that. Okay, let's enjoy this thing a little. Mm -hmm. Let's just have right. that. Yes, yeah, so I'm just let's stay for like another six months before we start trying. Little did we know that you know that wait was going to be longer. And that was what happened actually. It, it took longer and you know we continued waiting for a longer time and we began to get worried about um, a year and a half and we were wondering what's the problem and my husband was like, you worry, just relax, we'll, we'll get there. I'm sure you were still enjoying the honeymoon, <laughs> you know, so but it, it, it became a reality, it became something that we, we needed to start um, getting concerned about and um, you know, all of that happened for about four years until, um, you know, I got into some level of fertility advocacy mm -hmm. um, with a colleague of mine that happened to be my boss at the time. Mm -hmm. She had waited for a couple of years. She had waited um, for about eight years. She had had a child. Mm -hmm. And um, at that point, I wanted to understand mm -hmm. how she went through that period of waiting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we became friends. Mm -hmm. And that today, that that friendship, that um, um, interaction, mm -hmm. um, today built a foundation that talks and supports women, and well, I don't say women, I say families, mm -hmm. um, that are waiting, waiting for children, mm -hmm. you know. And that, that particular foundation has it's been about seven years now mm -hmm. running. Mm -hmm. In that space of time, I've had my children, oh, and, yeah. um, you know, so, it's become like a, a life drive for me to um, tell people to be vigilant, to really not mm. think that everything is okay. Mm. Um, anything could be wrong. I, I should come in. Thank yeah. you so much for that. What do young women, what do they need to do to check themselves before marriage? Because I understood that some, most times we get carried away with the euphoria of preparing for marriage, wedding, getting carried away, photo shoot, and the rest. And the real medical checks some of us have not done it. Yeah. So, so many times we do we do dental checkups. We do uh, we you know we go to the hospital yeah. where we have headaches. Yeah. You know, but yeah. sometimes we don't even know the signs to understand that you know every every young man thinks that he's fertile. Every mm. young every young woman mm. you know he, he even crowns it if you're a virgin like ah, ah I'm not very so I, I you know all the Christian women like ah don't worry don't worry I'm fine. But you can never tell what could be wrong. 
So it's very important that um, young people and um, you know the young and married go for regular checkups. Um, you, you need to know what your hormone is talking about. Mm -hmm. You need to understand, um, thank God we have a doctor here, so we'll talk about the progesterone levels. You need to understand how your hormone, sometimes some women that are not pregnant, um, they lactate, they bring out, um, um, yes, they bring out milk. Breast milk. Yes, breast milk. And sometimes, you know, somebody thinks that is a cause, is something, but they don't realize that it's an excessive uh, production of a particular hormone. That is happening to the well, body. Be yes, it can actually be stopped. But if you know that as a young person, as a young unmarried or a, an un unmarried person, it's something that should be treated and something that you need to take pay attention to. Sometimes it's even the painful menstruations. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of us have this painful menstruations, and we do not think that is anything. Um, really, menstruations shouldn't be painful. You know, so if you have painful menstruations, that is a signal that something is. You know, it should be painful ones that you have. Some people. I think if you have, yes, there's sometimes. Yes, that things that you have to try to get her back. Yes, 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 very true, very true. I know a couple of people. I lived in the hostel at at some point. I know a couple of people that this particular girl. She's she's totally out of. She can't do nothing for three days. Yeah. So and those are issues that people need to pay attention to. Signals. They're actually signals of an issue in your body. In your body. Look at yes. that. And so if you don't pay attention to those issues, they graduate to other things. Okay. You know, I also had, you know, painful menstruations, but I didn't take it as anything. You know, so all over time, you you know, those are the things that um, develop into polycystic polycystic um 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 ovarian syndrome. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. And um there's another syndrome that you know um i think is endometriosis okay. you know those are the things that graduates to endometriosis and okay. stuff and those things are the cost of many infertility issues yeah. uh, doctor dr Wood, could you please throw some light on that it's trying to do last big words to use. <laughs> <laughs> for us lemmers like lemmers like us rather well when we when we say infertility we're actually talking about a couple who have cohabited mm -hmm. with um together in the last 12 months, mm -hmm. having unprotected intercourse mm -hmm. and still without uh, conception. Mm -hmm. So that is what we call infertility. Mm -hmm. And um, most of the time, it is caused by, like she said, endometriosis is one of the causes, uh, pelvic inflammatory diseases. Oh, what's that? That's endometriosis <laughs> is simply having your uterine lining, that is the endometrium, mm -hmm. outside the womb. So there are some, because of some situations, the uterine lining is so outside the womb and then the woman, it gives causes that pain during her period. It's like that part of the body menstruates oh, okay. during her menstrual period. Okay. So that's what we call endometriosis. What about the pelvic? The, per, the pelvic, the uh, polycystic, polycystic ovarian syndrome uh -huh. is just ovarian cyst in the ovaries. Yes, it's a syndrome that has where um, it is caused when there is um, uh, when a woman ovulates. Mm. Usually, when a woman ovulates, the, the ovary, the cell where the oil of the egg was released, is left vacant. But with time, the body absorbs it. Please, I'm, we're gonna hold it there. Please, <laughs> please, so much to say for now. Please, let's go on a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back very shortly. Stay with us. So when, when a woman, after ovulation, that is the release of an ovum, mm -hmm. of the egg, into mm -hmm. the fallopian tube, what is left, we call it the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum is supposed to have a uh, very little amount of liquid, okay. and with time, the body absorbs it if there is no conception. Oh. But in some women, it is known to persist and becomes filled with fluid, be, that's what we call an ovarian cyst. In the womb? Yes, in the ovary. In the ovary? In the ovary, because okay. it comes, it's part of the uh, cells in the ovary. Okay. Now, with time, it increases or it remains at that size. And with some women, 
with, with another ovulation, another cyst forms. And as it forms, continually forms, becomes a syndrome. So we call that polycystic ovarian syndrome. So that how is, can it be dealt with? Usually it's, um, it's operable when, it's, when it does not give symptoms. When it's still mild, it's usually do we just observe and watch. But as it continues to increase in size you know, and it gives symptoms, the human is advised to have it operated upon. And so it should be operated like a fibroid? Yes, it should be operated upon. Wow. But when is you have dangerous when, as fibroid? Well, I won't say fibroid is dangerous. Because in the past, they're taking some lives. That's what I meant by dangerous. That's fibroid? Yes. Well, fibroid is, is a benign, yeah. non-cancerous okay, tumor. We'll come back to that. Let's finish with ovarian. So I said, I don't, I don't skip the... So the thing is, with the cyst, mm -hmm. the problem become, comes up when it becomes a syndrome. And it becomes a problem because it is one of the major causes of infertility. Oh. Yes. Thank you and so much. Oh, oh, opportunity will be great on a break. Oh. When it's 
when she had Canadian society, it was not well treated. Yes. It became chronic, and then yeah. usually it ascends to the fallopian tubes mm -hmm. and causes blockage. Okay. Wow. That's when it becomes an infertility. So it's difficult for conception. Yeah, because yes. conception happens only when the sperm is the egg yes. Yes. and they yes. meet in the tube. Yes. So if the tube is blocked, there's no way they're going to meet. Oh, so you know, there's a that says that should have to go to the hospital and check. Maybe probably. Actually, it's called HSG. 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 Okay. We have to do it to flush your tube. And sometimes people, I know someone. Like I talked about someone that we started foundation together. She had a, it was it was an infection issue, and that blocked her, so she couldn't have a child until she was able to go for IVF. And that's why she's very passionate about you know telling people. You can't, you can't just assume that everything is fine. Well, I agree with you. There's need for people to go, you know, to go for knowledge, for learning. And there's one final word we talked about. Recently, somebody posted, was it very recently? I don't know. Somebody posted on internet and said she had her eggs frozen. She freezed her eggs. She was excited about it. Guess what? I, I have to freeze my eggs today, blah, blah, blah. And you should, hear, you should see comments. You should read comments. I was shocked because I feel that Nigerians are so naive. I'm sorry to use the word Nigerian, but. Yeah. Well, a, 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 a percentage of the people I read their comments, maybe not all of them, so they still do not even understand what it means to freeze it, uh, uh, an egg. Yeah. So people thought that you literally get the egg, take it to your freezer, and drop it there. Please, put your phone lights on. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll say a bit, then I guess the doctor will say yes. all those things. Um, it, you can freeze your egg as, as um, an Amari single. And like you said, the egg is not like the egg, the egg <laughs> that you eat. Yes. It's quite tiny. You can actually see an egg with your eyes. It's something that you have to see with a microscope. And so, you know, it, it goes through a retrieval process. And, you know, there's, there's, a, um, there's a device that is, that is used to um, freeze it. And that can only be done okay, during the ovulation and so on. So, we have in Nigeria. Fantastic. Do yeah. Really have it. We do. We do. We do. It's, it's actually most, most in most fertility clinics. Oh. Yes, most fertility Some people don't have, like in a small fertility clinic, they don't have a facility, but they have all the fertility clinics that are being When are you supposed to freeze your eggs? Okay, so now your eggs are as old as your age. So if you're 15, your egg is 15 years old. So if you decide to freeze at 15, fantastic. If your parents, you know, like parents need to be very aware. You need, you know, if there are issues in the family. Yes. Sweetheart. They have to tell you some basic things. The thing is, the thing is, the thing is. As a parent, as a forward-looking parent, you need to also think about it. So if you want to go for idea, they keep telling you that you are both fancy, your eggs are too old. Is that true? It's not. The thing is, every woman is born with about 400,000 eggs, and your egg age with you. So it's actually not only the quantity, but the quality of the egg. Same goes with the man. Same goes with the man. It's just that the man's case is different because spermatogenesis, that's the production of sperm cells, skip, mm. keeps occurring. Mm. But then even if it's health, because when we talk of the problem with us here, when we talk of infertility, the focus is on the woman. Meanwhile, there's men's health. Whatever the man does, yes. whatever the man does in yes. 90 days mm -hmm. affects his quality of sperm mm. during that period that like it produces. Whatever the man, a man does, drinks, smokes, oh. unhealthy diets, oh. between now and 90 days, determines the health of his sperm at that period that he produces. And so come back home and be learning the poor woman. That doesn't mean I don't think, oh Lord, you're joking. It's true. Yeah. So then he's still out for you, so you got something today. It's not about the woman. Look at that. Okay, okay. Still talking about freezing eggs. Aside freezing eggs, what other measures should a married woman above 35 close to this? What should they do to help them conception? I mean, dealing with infertility marriage. Doctor, one last one. We're going to the system. Well, apart from freezing their eggs, it's also to check if there are other diseases, yeah. other health issues that could affect their fertility rates level. So going for health checks. Regularly, okay. once a year we advocate. Okay. If there are no health issues, yeah, once sure. a year is fine. Okay. If there is a family history okay. of other 
other health issues with diabetes, hypertension, and other chronic diseases which could affect their health, their fertility, uh, their productivity and fertility mm -hmm. level, mm -hmm. they should also get it checked and taken. Fantastic. Okay, Mr. Sema, what kind of what other things should unmarried men do? Yeah, unmarried so, women, you know, when you both are both 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 yes, um, we need to leave, we need to make sure that they're not anxious. Um, you know, mm -hmm. freeze your egg mm -hmm. and don't be anxious because you see, anxiety can can mess up the quality mm -hmm. of your eggs. Mm -hmm. Anxiety can cause miscarriages. Yeah. You know, so um, you need to come to that place where you are not anxious. Yeah. And you know, sometimes so it's not easy. I know it's not. I know. I can. I, I can tell you it's not. But it's a state of mind. Anxiety is a state of mind. And like, you know, like what you're doing and advocating, which is very profound, helping um, the unmarried woman to be impactful and live an impactful life beyond all of those things, you know. So when you eventually get married, don't wait six months. No, no, go like move So just, just go, 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 you know, go get it. And if you're frozen your egg, please go for the IVF very quickly, you know. And if possible, if even if you don't freeze your egg and you get married, it's better to begin to try IVF as soon as possible. Okay. You know, I'm not, I'm not advocating IVF for any reason, yeah. but I'm telling you that for free, it's better to just go ahead with it. At that level, at that time, you have more, more chances to, to make it work. And there are many other things that you can begin to do. Like, there are many other things that you can begin to do. There are many other councils or some stuff some other ways that you can begin to uh, make alternative arrangements. You need to because when you go to the fertility clinic, there's a lot that you'll be told. You're told. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you must come to that place where you're not you're not like inhibiting yeah. stuff so, that you probably need to do. You yeah. need to have a donor yeah. if you if you, if you, have, if to, you have to. We'll and if that is a, yeah, yeah, if that is an issue you must come to the you must understand mm. that it's not it's not a it's open to rest it's open to everything so, else you just have to call it today thank, thank you. you so much you can go on and on yeah. thank you so much we appreciate you we're going to have a big break thank you so much for our guests for coming on the show and we're glad to have you here today thank you this day with us we'll be right back very shortly after this time out You learned a whole lot. I did, I sure did. And now you know there are ways you can deal with infertility issues. It's better safe than sorry. Thank you once again for tuning in. My name is Ogaga Utawutu. Always remember that as a non mother, <laughs> as a young woman, you, there is need for you to live the very essence of life and enjoy your life to the fullest while you're still single. Thank you so much for loving us. Have a wonderful day ahead. Bye bye. <laughs>